We're now going to go back to our main speakers this evening. On the proposition, our third speaker is Paulette Lernert. Paulette is the Deputy Prime Minister and Health Minister for Luxembourg. A member of the Luxembourg Socialist Workers' Party, she's also the Minister of Consumer Protection and Minister of Devel Development, Cooperation and Humanitarian Affairs. Paulette, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. It's a great honor to speak to you and to share my experience, my personal experience, but also the experience of my country. So Luxembourg figures among the countries who have adopted uh, a law in 2009, several laws actually. We have uh, at the same time passed a law in Parliament on uh, euthanasia and assisted suicide, but also on palliative medicine. And this already is symbolic because it shows that we have to do with two very different things. And what we're talking about here, the right to die, is about actually how can the right to die be effective? Because the right to die needs sometimes assistance when a person is faced with unbearable pain, with no perspective at all, with no issue of getting better at any time, and it has made the decision to die, it is not easy to realize this. So we say it easily, it's a right to die. But you may feel quite helpless in this situation because the most majority, all of I would assume most of us just don't have access to medical support, to, to medicines, or whatever it takes to have a decent way to pass away. So basically, for me, the whole debate is about helping somebody who is in a helpless situation. It's a matter of compassion. And then we're talking about laws. So just let not assume that a law can be perfect. A law by nature is never perfect. It's a democratic compromise. It, it mirrors the situation of a society at a certain moment of time. And it has to go on. Law has to change. Although we are reluctant to change as human beings, we don't like change that much. But society evolutes, so we have to adopt the laws. And we should not argue by adverse effects of situations in order not to move. It is not yet, I think. What is the way to say it in English? Not to take the comments? No, no. okay, very easy. <laughs> I understood that I should use that a few times unless uh, my time will run off. So what does it take to have a, a good law? And, and is the law we have in place a good law, which I, I would like to promote? I, I couldn't say so. The only thing I know is that when you talk about adverse effects, you have to reflect if you can act on them. And if we leave the things in the grey zone, well, we cannot act on them. And we know the fact. There is evidence that things do not go the way they should. Many people just don't have choice. They will take uh, action that is uh, cruel, that is uh, cruel for everybody, for themselves, for their families, for their loved ones. They will choose to leave the country. There's a matter of uh, equity. Not everybody can afford this, so uh, not everybody has the same right. And we know that we have adverse effects by several laws. We hear them. But why don't we just learn from these adverse effects and from the abuses and just reflect how can we set up a good law, a law that puts up the right safeguards? Because that's the key. If we are afraid of abuse, of vulnerable people not having a real choice, so we should put up the safeguards it needs and then it can work. When the law was passed in Parliament in Luxembourg, it was a very, very emotional debate. It, it nearly led to a constitutional crisis because we are a Grand Duchy and our monarch, the Grand Duke, he refused to sign this law out of religious considerations, which everybody respected, but uh, it was a real problem. So we had to change our constitution. And by solidarity, this happened very quickly. Normally it takes years. The last one took like 10 years, but at that time it took two weeks, nearly two weeks. So uh, what happened is that our Grand Duke just uh, renounced to a big part of his legislative power. Because up to then, he was the one who signed the law, so he had to acknowledge the law. And now he's just proclaiming them, just uh, rendering them public. So we find a way to respect uh, his will and, and still respect the will of Parliament of that time. And despite all the emotions we had at that time, we have a good experience with this law, I have to say so. It is, there is no abuse. We cannot see an increase yet. Now you will tell me there's no data yet. But uh, we have talks with the person who, who accompanied the people, and people are relieved. 
we are relieved to have this perspective, to have an option. And freedom, to my opinion, is very much about choice. So if a person chooses to die, it is his choice. And the person itself is the only one that can appreciate what is unbearable. Yes. I think you're right. It is choosing about uh, the least worst option because uh, when your option is just to, uh, to go a mile, which is a mile of suffering, it can be an option to rely on palliative care if that's your choice and, and trust the system. And I will come back to that as well. But it can also be your choice not to walk this last mile and, and just to go in dignity and choose the moment you go. Uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody would prefer to live. So. And, uh, and now I would like just to draw your attention to what it takes to have a, a good reply to the request of somebody who wants to die. I think it, it, in the first place it needs respect. It is a free decision, so it needs respect. We should not put a judgment on this. Who are we to judge if a person's life is unbearable? It's only the person itself who should judge this. We should respect this will. And it has to be clearly expressed, if that's the point uh, that you want to make. And that's one of the safeguards you have to put in place. I mean, you, you have to make sure that it is the will, and that the will is free. And this is easily said. It, it's difficult to put to assure this. It's complex, but it is a challenge, and we should take this challenge. Why should we take the challenge? Because we know that the adverse effects of not acting are worse. If I draw the balance, my conclusion is clear. It is not an option, it is undecent just to accept and look away that people are desperate, that people are killing themselves in, in awful ways, and, and I don't come up with examples, we all know examples, that people have to leave the country, that they have to put pressure on their beloved ones because they take action uh, that risks them to, to, uh, to, well, they risk to go to court and to be prosecuted, so nobody wants that. And these adverse effects, we have no action on them. Whereas when you put the law in place with good safeguards, you can act on the adverse effect. And, and that's what we should reflect on. We should put in place the safeguards it needs to assure the respect, to make sure the will is free. And we need the compassion as well. Because the people are suffering, nobody wants to go away. And you just put it right. It, it is not a, a funny choice to, to choose to die. It's just a matter of facing your death and the terminal issue. And you just don't want to go this last step. It, it's a choice you can have. You can rely on palliative medicine. That's fine if you want it. But you should respect the person that decides to pass away earlier. Compassion is important because uh, when you realize that laws are not respected, and that's the case, we all know about the cases of, uh, that come to court, but the people who go abroad. So there are many, many cases where the people just don't respect the law. And why is this? Because when it comes to interpersonal relations, when it comes to love, when you see somebody you love who is suffering, you don't care for the law, you will break the law. And we know that. And so we should just protect people from this. We have a duty to protect the vulnerable. It is all about protecting the vulnerable. Even setting up a law to allow assisted dying is about protecting the vulnerable. Because we can put up the safeguards it needs. What about the vulnerable when you don't have a regulation? They are just left alone. They will travel wherever. They will be, if they don't have enough money, they might just buy in the internet uh, kits that are dreadful, that cause uh, enormous suffering. You have no control, you have no monitoring. You cannot reflect on if what you put in place is right or if it needs adjustments, for instance. So transparency is really the argument to regulate to have a view on it. And uh, the third one I really would like to stress, and that's the, the most important to my opinion, is that uh, despite respect, despite compassion, it needs professional assistance. It needs really professional and organized assistance to make sure that the will is free. Because it is not easy. People might be in a situation of distress. Suicide might be, suicidal thoughts might be a symptom of an illness. So it really needs a professional on the side of the person to make this sure. 
Yes. Luxembourg abolished the tax on punishment in 1979. A common argument for that is we're not, we're never really 100% sure that the person convicted did indeed commit the crime. They could be wrongfully convicted and they could die. So why is it the case that we can allow people to give a doctor their permission to die when we're really not 100% sure that this is indeed their consent, that they're not mentally ill in some capacity, that they can't really speak their true mind or they're in a vulnerable state. So why, why are you saying yes for one but no for the other? You're not, it's not 100% in either case. No, it, it's just a completely different premise because uh, there's no choice. If you're in a process, you take away the life from somebody, it's the choice of society that this person has to die because it has committed things you wouldn't accept. But it's not the choice of the person. What we are talking about here is the freedom of choice. The well, that's the way. adverse effect. That's if precisely an adverse effect. Can you please uh, carry on? Yeah. Thank you. And uh, what you are talking about is precisely the adverse effect. Uh, and, uh, and that's what I am talking about. That's what you have to make sure that you put into place the right safeguards. Good procedures, that you have a supervision, that you have this as part of your care system, and that you have an informed choice as well. The first is the free choice, and the other is the informed choice. And they're just, let me stress the importance of a good care system. Yes, we need good palliative care. We need a culture of palliative care, because there need to be good options. And the pe person need to be informed of all the options. So this is also an important part of this professional information we need. We need a professional assistance, somebody to rely on, you can trust. Trusted information is so important. And when you have the right information, the right safeguards, I think freedom should prevail. Thank you.